everybody, welcome to episode 31 of the Famous Pipe Smoker Friday show. I'm sorry for my two-week absence. Uh, check out my video explaining what happened. Um, anyways, on today's episode, we remember radio, film, and TV star William Conrad. Authoritative, resonant, and powerful sensitive, thoughtful, and compassionate. Few actors of the radio era combine all these qualities so thoroughly as the man who in many ways encapsulates all that was most creative and most memorable about post-war radio drama. William Conrad seemed to be everywhere on the air in the 15 years following the end of the Second World War. Even later, when radio was reduced to a shadow of, the, of its former self, William Conrad remained a booming voice in commercials and special features right up until the end of his own life. Even the most casual of all-time radio enthusiasts knows his most famous role, the definitive Western hero Matt Dillon. But William Conrad had a career far more varied, far more interesting, and far longer lived than even that legendary portrayal. William Conrad was born to show business, but not originally as a performer. His parents owned and operated a movie house in Lexington, Kentucky, just across the river from Cincinnati. Conrad's childhood was spent under the arc lamp glow of its projectors. An avid movie buff, young Bill got his chance to see his film favorites up close when the family relocated to Los Angeles and he spent his teens fixated on the idea of a career as a screen actor but like many body actors in the late 1930s he found an easier entree into acting at the microphone radio station KMPC was an aggressive up-and-comer in the world of independent Los Angeles radio. As the 30s became the 40s, owned by Gordon Richards of Detroit, KMPC built itself as the station of the stars. That promotional gimmick was made real when Richards sold a minority interest in the station to a coalition of celebrities, including Harold Lloyd, Charles Correll, Freeman Gosden, Paul Whiteman, and Bing Crosby. These personalities lent their names and faces to the station publicity, but Richards himself remained firmly in charge. Emphasizing the same range of homegrown programming that have worked for his Detroit outlet, outlet, his most notable feature at both WJR and KMPC was a Baroque horror anthology called The Hermit's Cave, which offered the KMPC acting company plenty of opportunity for experimentation with microphone technique. Young Bill Conrad, with his impressive growling bass, fit right into his, this group of actors, and before long he was producing the feature as well as acting in it. He seemed poised for a bright future on the air, but that future would have to wait until after the Second World War. There was no paper pushing desk job or showbiz bond selling tour waiting for Air, Air Corp Lieutenant William Conrad when he learned when he earned his commission in 1943. He found himself escorted straight into the cockpit of a fighter plane until his superiors realized that he suffered from night blindness. 
I suffer from everyday blindness. <laughs> Grounded, Conrad ended up in far more familiar and less hazardous surroundings when he was assigned to the Armed Forces Radio Service. Here, he honed his skills as a producer and director alongside such future colleagues as Elliot Lewis and Howard Duff. When he emerged from the service in 1945, he was ready to pick up his civilian career where he left off. And he hit the ground running, appearing in dozens of series in hundreds of roles in the years just after the war. He was rarely the star in these early years, but he was always somewhere in the cast. He quickly became one of the most dependable, most recognizable actors in Hollywood radio. William Conrad became a television star rel relatively late in his career. In fact, he began his scre screen career playing heavies. He was Max, one of the killers in the 1946 movie of the same name, hired to finish off Burke Lancaster in his dinghy lodgings. He was the corrupt state inspector Turk working for the syndicate in the racket in 1951. He was the murderous, murderous gunslinger Tolman in Johnny, Gan Johnny Concho in 1956. And sleazy nightclub owner Louis Castro, who claimed to be 60% legitimate in Cry Danger in 1951. The portly, balding, crumple-faced, self-confessed gourmand had an ever-present weight problem. At what time, 180, 118 kilograms, or around 260 pounds, which proved to be a natural obstacle to progressing to more substantial leading film roles. However, as I said, that didn't hinder him from a very successful career in radio. Conrad's grave, gravelly, resonant voice was certainly heard on countless broadcasts, from Buck Rogers to the Bullwinkle Show. He is probably best known for his nine-year stint as Matt Dillon in Escape, or Gunsmoke, before James Arness got the part on screen. To narrating adventures of Richard Kimball in the television program The Fugitive. Since his corpulence effectively precluded playing strapping characters like Matt Dillon, Conrad began to concentrate on directing and producing by the early 1960s. This ironically included episodes of Gunsmoke. In 1963, he contributed to Saving 77 Sunset Street for yet another season. Later in the decade, he produced and directed several films for Warner Brothers, including the thriller Brainstorm in 1965 with, with Jeffrey Hunter and Anne Francis. In 1971, he returned to acting and became the unlikely star of the Queen Martin production, Canon, for which he is chiefly remembered. Conrad imbued the, fast, the tough talking, pipe smoking, nonsense character of Frank Cannon with enough humanity and wit to make the series compelling. But despite the show's popularity, he made his views clear in a 1976 Times interview that he found himself poorly served by the scripts. A planned sequel, The Return of Frank Cannon, failed to get beyond the movie-length pilot. But the actor's popularity resulted in, brief, in a brief run as eccentric Orchid-loving investigator, investigator Nero Wolf 
1981 in the show of the same name and another starring role in Jake and the Fat Man in 1987 as District Attorney Macabre, co-starring with Joe Penny. Conrad's role in the latter series proved his last stand. His health declined in the early 1990s and his heart finally gave out in 1992, bringing an end to the life and career of one of broadcasting's renaissance men. No matter what he did on radio or on television, behind the microphone or behind the scenes, William Conrad was a defining personality of post-war entertainment. All right, that's it. That is this week's episode. My thanks to INDB and radioclassics.com for the merged bio. Thank you so much for watching. Have you seen William Conrad's work? Were you lucky enough to have heard him on the radio? I knew him from uh, the television show Jake and the Fat Man. Well, let me know in the comments. Let's have a conversation about this. And as always, if you like this episode, please hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel so that you'll be up to date with all my video programming, including more episodes of the famous Pipe Smoker Friday show. Make sure to check out the last episode two weeks ago featuring Sam Neill. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the El Magnifico. And until next time, may God bless you all. So long and thanks for all the fish. Ciao.